Now, um, to catch you up to speed, everything that we have covered uh, since chapter 53 flows from that chapter. So in chapter 53, we've told you we kind of have uh, what's been called the Mount Everest of Bible prophecy as it pertains to the Messiah in the Old Testament. So chapter 53 of Isaiah is this detailed description of the Messiah 700 years before he would arrive. And then everything else flows from his person and his work. So chapter 54, we have the restoration of Israel, even though at this time, the time of this writing, they're in a great state of disrepair. In chapter 55, we have an invitation to the Gentiles, which up to this point had been almost unheard of. The Jews didn't think the Gentiles were even worthy of hearing the good news of the Jehovah God they worshipped. In chapter 56, we then have the conditions of the kingdom where both Jews and Gentiles will be together. And we're a part of that in the Christian church. And then in chapter 57, he beckons backsliders. Backsliders beckon to turn to the Lord. And so when we arrive in chapter 58, part of their backslidden condition was that they needed to fix their fasting. Now a fast is by definition to abstain from all or some kinds of food or drink, especially as a religious observance. Now, one of the most famous fasters in recent history worldwide was not a Christian, but in fact, uh, he was a man named Mahatma Gandhi. He was uh, a Hindu, and uh, he was actually an ardent student of the New Testament, specifically the Sermon on the Mount. He read it over and over and over, and he actually tried to live by the Sermon on the Mount, And part of both his Hindu religion and his reading of the Sermon on the Mount, those things together, they led him uh, to fast. And so Gandhi uh, walked around barefooted most of the time. Uh, He uh, had rough feet because of that. Calluses on his feet. He fasted for days on end for spiritual and political reasons. And so he wasn't very strong physically. He was this little bitty man. And uh, because of fasting, if you've ever fasted, you know that fasting lends itself to bad breath. So uh, it's been said that Gandhi was a super calloused, fragile mystic hexed by halitosis. <laughs> so, all that said, I was uh, sniffing around on the worldwide interwebs and on fasting websites, and I, I found this opening paragraph from one I thought I'd share it with you. It says, fasting. For many non-liturgical Christians, the thought of fasting triggers strong emotions of disdain as though the experience was overtly alien or unnatural. Yet, Jesus was unmistakably clear about this painful topic. He said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 15, that the days will come when the bridegroom, that was him, would be taken away from them, that is, his disciples, and then they will fast, that is, his followers. This means that fasting is, or ought to be, part of the normal Christian life. Stated differently, normal Christians fast, only abnormal Christians seek to avoid it. So with that riveting opening, look at chapter 58, verse 1. This is God to the prophet, and he says, Cry aloud and spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and tell my people their transgression." And the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and they delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. And they did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, and they take delight in approaching God. But then here's their question. Because they did all this, then they say, verse 3, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? And why have we afflicted our souls and you did not notice? So the people's presumption was that if they worshipped, and they did, and they studied the word of God, and they did, and they fellowshiped, which they hung out with other uh, Israelite believers, and they did, and they fasted, which they did, that then because they did these things, surely God would notice them and would hear them. But the problem is, he doesn't. So they say, why have we done all these things? Why have we afflicted our souls, but God doesn't notice us? 
Why does he seem to be ignoring us? Why are all these bad things happening to us? And it's because, the Lord would say, in fact, verse 3, in the day of your fast you find pleasure or you sin and you exploit all your laborers. God wasn't noticing their fast because the people in the middle of the fast kept on living for themselves. They didn't change the way they lived. And so they thought that because they were doing these processes of worship, that they would be received even though they weren't changing inwardly. But because the people kept on living for themselves and they weren't submitted to the Lord, then the truth is there was no growth and the Lord was not, if you will, engaging them where they were at. So what we find is the Lord then says, Indeed, you fast, verse 4, for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. And you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is this the fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to, he says, afflict his own soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? He asked them, would you call this an acceptable fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Now, the people were fasting faultily. They had faulty fasting. And yet the people fasted both frequently and uh, extravagantly. Now, the idea of fasting, as I have here for you, goes all the way back to Leviticus. It originates in that book that you love to spend all your time in, I know, Leviticus. And uh, there, it was connected with the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is the highest of the Jewish holy days. It's the one day a year when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, and sprinkle blood upon the mercy seat to make atonement for the people's sins for that year. And in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29, it says that this shall be a statute forever for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger that dwells among you. Now, the phrase afflict your own souls has nothing to do originally with fasting, but the Jews begin to interpret it as such. And so they believe that every Yom Kippur, or Day of Atonement, that they were to fast. And indeed, they do it to this day if they are devout Jews.